Maher has always been politically incorrect. After ABC canceled the show of that very name a few years back, he bounced back with an HBO program called Real Time, where his sometimes caustic humor and unabashed liberal commentary are pleasing his fans and ticking off his detractors. In taking the program to Los Angeles this past week, I dropped by the studio where Real Time is aired. And we're here in Television City with Bill Maher. Thanks very much for letting us stop by and sit in these director's chairs. Literally Television City. Literally. People may think you were just referring to L.A. in general, but this is a compound called Television City. You have feasted for a long time on George Bush and Dick Cheney. We're in a new era now. On your program a while back, you told a joke about President Obama. Hey, you know who's superstitious about Friday the 13th? Republicans. They say the country is having bad luck because we let a black cat in the White House. <laughs> Do you remember the audience reaction? <laughs> yeah, well, they boo me a lot when I talk about Obama. Why is that? What does that tell you? It tells me that we get a very super sensitive liberal audience, you know. I mean, uh, this is one reason I always have trouble doing charity events. I'm all for charity. But the events, you know, it's always that limousine liberal crowd that just has their finger on the politically correct button. You know, they're just ready to like, ooh. And the wrong like, Zzz, yeah, Zzz. I mean, that's what, that's what bugs me the most about liberals, is that they just, they object before they even know what they're objecting to. Aren't these your people, Bill? No, not when they do that. But I'm much more of a, you know, I'm, I, I'm a free speech person. And uh, I would say, uh, especially on campuses in the last 10 or 15 years, the repression of speech has come more from the left. But you were quoted as saying Obama is the new god, meaning that he's difficult to make fun of, that people you know, are I shying think, away? I think I said he was chocolate Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but are comedians treading lightly with this president? Oh, we have to stop asking that question. Well, give me a good answer. It's, I've been answering this question. <laughs> Media has to stop asking whether comedians can deal well, with the president. Well, I don't see uh, Leno and Letterman and Jon Stewart skewering him. Well, watch my show. Okay. I do, and that's why I get booed. <laughs> and you're willing to take those boos? Absolutely. Unless you're getting booed sometimes, you're not saying anything. You're just, you know, show. confirming what your audience already believes, and that's not really helping. You so you want to challenge people, and those boos are a badge of honor. Let's talk about some, the media coverage of some things that have been in the news. Swine flu. I, I thought millions of people were supposed to be dead by now. What happened? I never bought it. Uh, when it first came out, I remember we said, you know, this is the latest non-event that the media is going to hype. Um, you know, Jimmy Breslin said a great thing once about television. He said, the message of television is stay home and watch more television. Swine flu was very good for CNN, wasn't it? And the other cable networks? Everything. And did they scare the hell out of people unnecessarily? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a bigger problem, which is that people don't really, I think, in this country understand anything about health. I think the medical community is corrupt and ill-informed, and I don't think people understand that this is a flu. All flus come from animals. They come from birds. They come from pigs. And, um, you know, the, the regular flu, which has a much worse publicist than swine flu, apparently, as you know, kills, you know, tens of thousands every year. And doesn't get much press. Doesn't get much press. And, uh, <laughs> what are you, Kramer? <laughs> I'm trying to get in the mood here. All right, let me and, ask. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the answer is to have a strong immune system. But that would involve eating right and, you know, adjusting your lifestyle. Boring. And, yeah. All right. Uh, Miss California, Carrie Prejean, you've had some fun with her. She, of course, well, gave that answer opposing gay America marriage in the beauty pageant. Uh, the why has she been um, such a target? A land that you can choose. Well, she's not been such a target for me, but, you know, she, she's unavoidable. She's certainly all over the serious news channels, and she shouldn't be. Um, but, you know, I, I don't even understand why the question was asked of her. Did we used to ask beauty queens? these kind of political questions? No, but Perez Hilton thought it would be a great question to ask, perhaps get some attention right. for something he feels about. Usually right. you ask him about world peace. But, yet, but well, here I, I thought her answer, not the answer at the pageant, but later when she said Satan was trying to tempt me with that, I think that says a lot about our country because, you know, here's a person who believes in Satan, as does, I would guess, 60, 70, 80 percent of this country, this dumb, dumb country. 
believes in demons and some creature with horns and a tail and a pitchfork who's going to make you burn in a mythical place if you don't believe in an imaginary friend. That's really the root problem of it, isn't it? But if, since Carrie Pujan didn't ask to be uh, put into this particular spotlight, she got asked the question, she answered it as best she could. You know, you're making fun of her breast implants. What, breast implants are so unusual here in L.A.? No, I just told you that to me the root problem is that religion is stupid and dangerous. I'm right. not all about. I'm not about the breast plants. Let's get let's get to religion is stupid. All right, because <laughs> that's the bottom of it. You um, seem not to be the most popular guy on Fox News these days, Sean Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> really? Sean what changed? <laughs> I see this with Bill Maher, for example. Bill Maher has become an angry, bitter guy. No, he's an angry bit of guy. That's called projecting. That's called taking what you feel and giving it to somebody else. I'm a happy single <laughs> guy. He's a repressed, typical Republican. You know, just, I'm sure, just terribly sexually repressed. And it comes out in all other sorts of hatred and vile and bile. Um, you know, Please. bitter. I'm, why would I be bitter? First of all, our side won, you know. Their side is in in a wilderness like they've never been before. Uh, so, but you say hatred. I mean, he is arguing for what he believes in. Well, I don't. I don't. You you watch it. I don't. It's my job to watch everybody. All right. Another Fox host, Greg Gutfeld, said one of the great things about Ooh. Obama. Greg Gutfeld. He's on. Greg Gutfeld. He's on late at night. Is that a real name? Uh, one th is this a trick question? No, no, no. Come on. I would do you're that. You're making up. A, you're making up a Fox newscaster. It's okay. I'll go along with it. One of the great things about Obama is how it terminated the relevance of Bill Maher. His shtick is now just a smirk in a suit. Are you getting under the skin? <laughs> I guess so. Hey, when you when you piss off Greg Gutfeld. I think you're doing something right. Who's Greg Gutfeld? I know more about John and Kate than this guy. Do you ever tell a joke and you say, gee, you know, I wish I could have that one back and maybe you went too far? You yes. Know. Oh, absolutely. How often does that happen? I never understand people who say, I have no regrets. It's like, really? Are you human? What are you, Mr. <laughs> Spock? You have no regrets? I have a regret every day. How can you not live your life without certain regrets? Yeah, sometimes. I must say, a nice thing about getting older is you... Is you regret less because you learn more and you get a little wiser. But, but yes, I always have trouble sleeping Friday night because that's our tape day. And as the night progresses after we finish taping, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, I could have said that better. Or I, I should have, like, went longer on this. You know, you, if you're a perfectionist, it's very hard to uh, square yourself with the end of a tape day. Oklahoma's out of ammo because they're afraid Obama and his Negro army are going to come and get you. Hey, you're still in my act. <laughs> I'm reading back to you, Bill Maher. I know. All right. That's right. That's right. They, uh, isn't that something? They actually, uh, this, is, this is despite the fact that Obama has not said boo, to his discredit, by the way, about gun control. You see, this is my point about the Democrats. We don't really have a party that represents me or any progressives. The, Re the Democrats really are what the Republican Party used to be. I think the Republican Party, which is at record low levels. That should go away entirely. The Democrats are what the Republicans used to be, a corporatist party that represents big business and doesn't stand up for progressive is issues. And then we need a whole new party that is what the Democratic Party used to be. Because, again, Obama has not said anything about gun control. Uh, ever since Al Gore lost Tennessee in the year 2000, Democrats have not had the they have guts away. to stand up on this issue. And uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't. What's interesting is it, it doesn't stop these yahoos from thinking that, as I said, his Negro army is going to come for your guns, and then they are going to install a cabinet of Shaft, Dolomite, Blackula, Cleopatra Jones. <laughs> is it harder for you, since you obviously work the left side of the street, to get conservative guests for your program? Um, I don't know about working the left side of the street. I'm more sympathetic to them, but as I just said, I'm not really a, a, a big fan of this corporatist Democratic Party that is in power. Um, it's just that the other party is super ridiculous. Uh, is it harder to get a conservative guess? Absolutely. And, and, and half the time when they come on, after they leave, they whine about it. 
you know, they come on our show and then they have to write a blog about how terrible it was that he sandbagged me, which is ridiculous. I don't sandbag anybody. You're supposed to be a speaker for a living. You have a microphone talk. If I said something so awful, make me look ridiculous. You have that ability. It's interesting. The women guests don't do that. Ann Coulter never does that. Well, you're she, friends with Ann Coulter. Absolutely. She never whines. Amy Holmes, she never whines. It's the men in the Republican Party who are such girls. <laughs> Last question for you. Obviously, times are tough. Recession, people losing their homes. Is it harder for a comic to get laughs in that kind of environment? No, I've had the best time on the road this year. You know, it's a whole new act in a whole new era. Uh, you know, George Bush was, as we all know, comedy gold for the longest time. Do you miss him? I don't, not even a little bit. Uh, but it's a pleasure to have a whole new crop of subjects to make fun of. And there is no lack of laughter because it's Obama. It's just a different kind of humor, um, different targets, you know, bankers, economic stuff. But uh, no, it's a, it's a very good time for comedy. It's a very good time to be here. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Bill I Mark. appreciate you coming out.